hello everyone in this video we are going to understand a very very important topic in whole obstetric and gynecology that is menstruation cycle now this is a very very important topic the problem happens with understanding this topic is when the students start understanding menstruation cycle they either they go very simply or either they go with very very confusing textbooks so at the end of the day students are not able to understand really what they need to understand instead of that they are just uh, confused whether that the estrogen is increasing fsh is increasing lh is there lh surge is there estrogen progesterone corpus luteum follicles all this confusion happens when the students actually try to understand the cycle on the other hand very simpler books just suggest that that the cycle has two phase one is a follicular phase one is a luteinizing phase so in follicular phase fsh will be there in lh phase lh will be there in follicular phase estrogen will be there luteal phase progesterone will be there here the follicles will develop and here the corpus luteum will be there and at the day of 14th ovulation occurs again this is not also enough the very simplest way of understanding menstrual cycle is this but again this is not enough this is for class 12th students or even 10th these days so so how to understand the cycle how a normal student can understand this cycle we will try to make <clears throat> as easy as possible along with much needed details now one thing you guys you need to understand is the menstruation cycle is not ovarian cycle ovarian cycle is different thing menstruation cycle is different thing when we talk about menstruation we talk about a uterus and the endometrium inside that the endometrium generated and degenerated every month when it is generated it's called generation phase and when it is degenerated the menses happens so the menses cycle is here ovary ovary has many amount of follicles the one follicles becomes bigger and bigger and becomes the dominant follicle and from that the ovum gets ovulated and the remaining part will be called corpus luteum so what is the connection between these things the connection between the ovulation cycle and the menstruation cycle is of hormones and that hormones are estrogen and progesterone estrogen and progesterone estrogen is required for growth of endometrium progesterone is required to make that endometrium acceptable for pregnancy or acceptable for implantation so who is the which hormone responsible for endometrial growth is it estrogen and not progesterone progesterone is not required for growth as such progesterone will will have functional changes into the endometrium already grown endometrium both this hormone required to maintain the endometrium 
when when the estrogen and progesterone are lost then the endometrium have no support and it will get degenerated and the menses will happen so it's very easy what ovaries do in this matter when the ovaries are there we see very uh, different amount of follicles if we see the structure of follicles we have two type of cells there granulosa cell and theca cell the granulosa cell secret estrogen theca cell secretes progesterone plus androgens so under uh, various effect of fsh and lh here is the confusion happens for example first of all fsh goes and act on granulosa cell they will secrete what estrogen no they will not secrete estrogen directly the same fsh will go to the theca cell along with small amount of lh the theca cell will generate androgens this androgen will go into the granulosa cell and this granulosa cell will do what it will activate the enzyme aromatase inhibit aromatase so this aromatase will do what conversion of androgens into estrogen that's how we get estrogen e2 is the form of estrogen important for pregnancy so e2 is produced by both granulosa cells and theca cells okay in the late effect of luteal phase then the progesterone started secreted by the theca cell so this is little bit confusing but we will make it simpler uh, you need to remember some of the things only we will just combine those very simpler method and those very very confusing detailed method into a very palatable method of description of menstruation cycle which is very very palatable to the students as well as knowledgeable and easy to remember now the menstruation cycle is uh, the period is of 28 plus minus 7 days that means 22 to 35 days it is normal Con now we know that the first half is a follicular phase and the second half is a luteal phase remember i am not exactly mentioning the day okay that the, on the 14th day uh, ovulation will occur no it can occur on 14 or 15 or 16 or 17 or even 22 or even 35 so there is no fixed way there is no fixed way of ovulation occur the fixed way is of luteal phase for example luteal phase ends into 14 days if the pregnancy doesn't happen so luteal phase is fixed of 14 days but follicular phase is not fixed okay let's see from the day one day one of menses is considered as a first day of menstruation cycle what happens in the day one fsh started secreting from anterior pituitary we all know these things this fhs will go and act on granulosa cells and the granulosa cell will start secreting estrogen e2 now this estrogen will have a negative feedback on what on pituitary glands and this estrogen my friends will generate endometrium in uterus start generating new endometrium in the uterus after the day one from day two to day eight the FSH slowly get decreased. Why? 
because because of the negative feedback of estrogen many and many follicles secret started secreting estrogen that's why the fsh will go down and down okay and the dominant follicle which is which is very very sensitive to the fsh uh, it will secrete more and more estrogen and that's why the fsh is now decreasing and that's why the follicles other than dominant follicles will also get atretic because they are not getting the fsh they want because the dominant follicle is is it become like independent it can act without fsh now but the other small follicles will not able to grow without fsh so they started getting atretic and only one follicle is becomes a dominant follicle now from day 9 to 12 what happens is small amount of lh also get secreted and that's why it will act on the thicker cells and they will produce some amount of progesterone also okay so estrogen is rising but now progesterone is also secreted in some amount now the very 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 important incidence happens is what when the estrogen level are more than 200 picogram for at least 48 hours the estrogen's negative feedback on the pituitary drastically change into positive feedback okay so when the estrogen is there more than 200 picogram for more than 48 hours drastic change will come and the fsh and lh will secrete it and that is called surge when we call it lh surge because lh surge is a very very common terminology but my friends there is not only lh surge there is fsh surge also along with the lh surge but lh was not being secreted before that much amount that's why it is called lh surge so both fsh and lh will increase for some time and uh, that will also increase estrogen and progesterone also okay so with this effect of estrogen and progesterone ovulation occurs the dominant follicle will rupture and ovulation will occur we just take it as a day 14 but it's not necessary that the ovulation occurs on day 14 once the ovulation occurs that dominant follicle will change will be converted into corpus luteum that is cl now the corpus luteum has luteinized granulosa cell and thicker cell both will uh, both of these cells will generate what estrogen and progesterone but not only progesterone my friends this is where you get confused the cl will generate both estrogen and progesterone while the dominant follicle will only secrete of what estrogen and only some amount of progesterone in late phase so in this this period day 14 to day 22 the uh, the corpus luteum will generate progesterone and also estrogen and that's why the endometrium on the uh, in the uterus uh, will be get those secretory changes that are very important for implantations now this estrogen and progesterone will have negative feedback on fsh and lh now okay so what happens is fsh and lh both get decreased and yes if the lh decreases the corpus luteum will lose that support of lh and that's why the corpus luteum will degenerate and once the corpus luteum will degenerate progesterone and estrogen will also become very low and the support of the endometrium will be lost that's why the menses happens okay 
suppose if there is a pregnancy there is a implantation happen then the trophoblastic cells of the embryo will secrete hcg and hcg will act as a lh for corpus luteum so uh, the corpus luteum will be rescued for another 10 to 12 weeks now if you see the structure of follicle it is a very rough structure sorry my drawing is not very good this is the oocyte you are seeing and uh, in outside the oocyte you will see the angular cells the antrum is there and this is the very weak follicle so this was about the menstruation cycle thank you friends